All right, so I checked the oil. We're gonna, it's very low on gas, but I can see some in there, so that's good. Um, I've got our throttle up to about half here. Uh, let's see how well this thing starts. So, last fall I would have run it out of gas, so I uh, can't get it with my big gloves on. I'm gonna put the choke on. And then this is the fuel shutoff, which we would have ran it out last fall. Turn that to off and then run the thing out. So, that's back on. I'll set you guys in the gravel and the straw here. Hopefully that's not getting in the way. And let's give it a pull and see what happens. Uh, what is our guess? Three pulls? Been all winter. Probably hasn't started since October, right? So that block was nearby so I drove a side up on it and I'll show you why because we get over here to where we're going to take and drop the oil out of it the plug is right there there's one on each side and they will equally drain all over that bracket so uh, pick a side I guess so that's what I did. I'm picking a side and uh, we'll get the wrench on there and pull the plug and see what happens. All 
All right, I think this plug is a 12 millimeter. Kinda seems to fit pretty good there. Whoa, that's, that's hard moving. I don't wanna bust my fingers. So, let's add a second wrench on here and get a little more length. Oh, there it goes. Broke free real nice. I think that's gonna be finger loose now. system. I imagine it's got a breather somewhere anyways. So there we are, draining oil. I'll uh, turn the camera off and we'll uh, come back when we're doing the air filter and filling the oil and some of these other things. Size that should be. Now, if you're super observant, you'll notice uh, while you were away, I grabbed some uh, brake cleaner and kind of hosed this down. And if you forgot how kind of oil dirty that was before, go ahead and uh, rewind a little bit and check it out. But clean it up really nice. I don't think I want to spray it on the electronics up here. That's fine so I'll probably wipe this down with a maybe a wet paper towel get some of this dirt off the gas tank or whatever but uh, you know for the most part it was nice to get that oil greasy stuff off I'll probably do the other side too so uh, we're good on our oil drain now I just need to uh, set that in there for a second while we work on our air cleaner and do some other things and we'll get the oil back in it before long I'm not even sure how much this takes. I'm going to guess around a quart or a quart and a half. But what we'll do is get it down off the block so it's sitting flat and level. And then we'll fill it up to the top of here because there is no dipstick on this. It's a Honda, I think a 13 horse. It's a, it's an um, BCS 853 is the actual BCS model. So whatever the Honda was that came with that, that's the one we have. So let's go uh, take a look and see what's in the air filter after some time here. All right, let's open the air filter up here and see what we got inside there. I want to clean this box off before I put it back on, might as well. Doesn't take much. All right, so that's certainly due or overdue for getting cleaned. I'll probably uh, end up with uh, shallow tub of gas and something to clean that foam. Probably there's a kit I should be buying that has a uh, new foam and new filter. So I'll probably look that up and figure out what that is and get one of those on the way. But for today, I want to get back in business a little cleaner than what this is. Let's see if we can take this off. Okay. I don't know if that's supposed to run so oily or why that's doing that. So I'm um, thinking I'll stuff paper towel here so the intake is... Oh, no. Look at that. This is nice. Okay, excellent. This... Uh, 
I can go clean that up without worrying about getting junk in the engine. I'm just trying to figure out what this is. I don't think this is much to worry about. Well, I'll wipe this down some too. I'll get it all cleaned up and then we'll go clean those parts and uh, I'll show you when we put it back together. All right, I'm trying to get you guys sitting here in a nice way so you can see what I'm about to check. Okay, right between the wheels on a BCS uh, is uh, this. And that is a dipstick looking thing that allows you to check the uh, transmission oil on this thing. And my best understanding is that you want it to be uh, level, or mostly level, pretty, pretty well level. You don't want the engine on the ground or the handlebars in the back on the ground or anything else. And this just pulls up. So you just pull it up and out. And I realized I did not prepare a paper towel. I've got one back right here. Um, I'm going to wipe this off. And we'll dip again and see how our level is. Hopefully good. Leave it down a second or so. Pull it back up. And kind of looks like to me we're doing pretty good. Because here's the top fill level, there's the low fill level, and then more. So I would say that's good. Um, this thing honestly has maybe 50 or 60 hours on it. It's not it's not 300 or 500 or some number. So it's fairly low hours, I would say, still. Good thing we uh, changed the air filter like we did. Uh-oh, we're stuck. Uh, hey, look at this. I wasn't even going to show you this. I was just going to go for the transmission oil. But, uh, yeah, we kind of shined up this and the exhaust. This thing is not quite dry yet, so I'm not really ready to put that back on yet. We're going to let that air out a little more. All right, so we're going to start putting oil back in this thing. Again, a little unsure about how much it's going to take, but I did an old bungee cord around the funnel over to some of those over on the other side. whole idea is to not have the funnel falling down or whatever. So pour the oil to some level. Come over and check and see if we're seeing it in the fill spouts. Don't see it yet. I don't know if I got enough oil in this jug for this thing or not. It's not a very big thing overall, so we don't want to go too far between checking. It's coming out, so I'll show you that. All right, let's come down here, take a little look, see how it's running out of there. So we'll put the fill caps on with it full. All right, we'll do the other one. Done with the oil change. I'll have you back when we're ready to put the oil, uh, air filter back on. And then that'll be the last thing we do. All right, I brought all the stuff over so we can uh, put the air cleaner back on. One of the things I found was this little thing that uh, keeps it all tight at the top is metal. And the bird poo does not come off. I thought about hitting it with a wire brush uh, but I want to take the paint off the whole thing, so that's it. That's all we get. So let's put this thing back together. I'm trying to remember what we got here. So this ring goes down there, around there, all the way down. Uh, 
just realized what is going on here. So this thing, a little tab, fits there. I didn't know that before. Didn't notice. And then that sits down real flush. The ring is kind of holding or sticking up there. Let's set our little wing nut thing there. Okay, so here's our air filter been cleaned up. Our uh, foam. Try and fit this back around. Hopefully, it stays pretty decent and tight. Okay. Kind of felt tucked up under a little bit on one end, maybe on both ends. But that's that. I don't know what else to do there, so I guess that's going to be it. Gotta figure out how to, there we go. Wing nut. We want to snug this down nice, but we don't want to turn it all the way to the moon, I don't think either. It's just. So that's good to know. That says AF, Z is in zebra, E is in Edward, 3 0. Uh, so I'm guessing that number would cross match. I should order one of these and have it on hand. And 7R20T. I don't know if that's going to be an air filter number or not, but we will see sometime. Now, I'm not real happy with how I got this cleaned up. I thought I had it better, but I didn't check this other side. A little, a little more here, I think. Something there. Now, do you guys remember? Does this part go? Not a lot. Of it. I didn't even get as clean as I thought it did. Now I'm getting it all oily and messy because my fingers got a little residue on them from the oil job. But okay, so let me get my bungee cord out of the way there. I'm pretty sure this goes just like this, so that the extra part goes uh, down here where a guy like me might be messing with things. And then it could, yeah, I bet it wouldn't even fit the other way because we're the, the way the engine goes. And then we have this. I'll turn that on. Tighten that down real about there. And uh, we are going to do one more thing. I'm going to check the oil in the uh, <clears throat> rotary plow next. So stay tuned for that. Coming right up. All right, we're going to check. Uh, the uh, oil level in here and there's a plug slash breather and then we have something that's written in Italian it says lubrication zone lithium grease EP NLG zero inspect when warm that the lubricating level be at two centimeters so I don't know what we're going to find when we take this off, but uh, it looks like a 7 8 uh, English wrench, and it's not that tight. I did kind of try to clean out around the hole, so after we get this off, we'll probably try to make sure nothing else could fall down there. Clean that up a little bit. It, uh, it does have a grease thing going on here. I'll grab a paper towel here and get that cleaned up before we drop anything down the hole that we don't want. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna clean this plug up a little bit. And then try to get all everything that's going on here away from the hole. So we just want to dip down. That's where it is, whatever that is. And then if you, that's the bottom. It's full of grease. I'll assume that's enough grease because I've never seen it come out. I've never seen it do anything else besides this work right. So I suppose a guy wouldn't be at all wrong to just put in my couple tubes of lithium grease. 
I didn't tighten that too much, but firm. And that's it. Thanks for watching. We're going we're gonna to head out to uh, the hoop house, and that'll be a different video, but we're going to go uh, uh, try and see what the right thing is out there. I'm not even sure how hard to chew that up. This does not till like a rotor tiller and just, you know, set it three inches, four inches deep and go through concrete. This is more of a stir the top of soft soil kind of a thing. So we're going to go out and see what uh, we can do and make use of this. All right, here we go. Thanks for watching this one. See you on the next one.